and welcome to another episode of Day at the Dude Ranch. Check this out. Love drilling holes with the great big drill bit. Yeah. We're getting the Ronda all ready for paint. Yes. At least that's what we're doing with the body. Uh, you'll see we'll be doing some neck work here in a little bit too, but let's get this baby all sanded, 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 sanded. And look at that. Remember I told you all that black stuff's going away? Bye bye yeah, that's right. Okay, so now we got down to the level matter that I was looking for. And we get to do it on the sides. And since I just do not have a sander that does this well, guess what? We use the sponge. Now, the sponges that I use, ironically, do have sanding material on them. But I find it's easy to just wrap paper around it. Okay, this is what I call taking care of pimples and dimples. In this case, these are dimples. Filling them in. I got a, li a little line right there on the belly car, taking care of that. A little grain line filling in. CA is an awesome grain filler when you're not uh, going to be doing anything else with the guitar other than painting. Um, you can use it if you're doing natural wood color, but just know that it won't take stain. So if you want to do it after the stain, that's fine, but. You know, for that, normally just use regular grain filler. Blow out the dust. Yep. And more sanding. And more sanding. And more sanding. You know, whether you're using uh, power equipment or hand sanding, I know I hear guys all the time talk about, oh my gosh, more sanding, really? And they talk about favorite and least favorite parts of guitar building. A lot of guys will say they don't like the sanding. I kind of like it. And actually, I like the hand sanding part, believe it or not. Um, I don't know, it's kind of a, a therapeutic thing. And now we stuff the cavities. Well, all out of blue towels, grab the white ones. And this just makes sure, uh, you know, we're going to be putting on finishing material here, or uh, sub-finishing, actually, sealer stuff. And my favorite, shellac. I just don't want it dripping down inside. So it's good just to stuff it up. See, I taped the back route. Look at that. That thing looks pretty already. What? That's a one lovely guitar. And that's what I want. You know, even though we are painting it, you want to still make it look good even if you weren't. And this we're just putting, um, it's pinstriping tape. You can also get it at Hobby and Model Stores. And it's pretty cool. I think this is Tahiji or something like that. Anyway, really good stuff, and it's just exactly, they call it six millimeters, it's right at quarter inch. So as it covers up that binding, we will be doing binding scraping uh, later. We'll be doing a lot of that. We'll be doing putting material on, scraping the binding. But uh, so at this point, I just like to use tape. Just save that from all the scraping we're gonna do later. And there's our white primer. Let it sit a little bit come in sand. Now you see how some of it's going away and some of it isn't. That's exactly why we did it. Just like just like with the black primer, same thing, only now we're doing white because we're getting closer to the paint color and I don't want black down there, I want white down there. So, more sanding. And see I'm using my uh, sands flat there. That's because we had uh, quite a big uh, dimple. It was one I didn't notice until we put the primer on, which is another reason to do it. So here we're going to do the same thing, get the dust out, and spray the top. Shake that can. And this is all stuff that we're doing sub-sealer, so, you know, I don't mind. I'm trying not to get any dust on it, but I don't mind a little bit. Okay, we're going to set that aside for a while and start working on the neck. The radius on this neck is going to be a combo 12 to 16. Notice I pointed at the number of this uh, radiusing block. It says 9.5. I like to get started with the with the more drastic block. It kind of takes down the edges of that fretboard because you see where I'm running my hands. I don't like those sharp edges, so kind of tone that down. Use an 80 grit paper here. Don't be afraid to use heavy grit paper. This is walnut. It needs a little work. Come down. You should see how much work you got to do with the ebony. It's even more. Now I'm flipping the neck on purpose. 
that way I'm not overworking one area because uh, no matter what I do, you know, my muscles are going to push a little bit differently in one section of the arm stretch than they are the other. So by flipping it just makes it nice and consistent. See again, I'm rubbing down that 9.5, coming back. At this point, it's I am worried about radius, but at this point I just want to get some wood going. And then I'll get on the detail radius, and for that I'll come down to uh, 110 or 150. But right now we're doing 80, just to get that really cut. Get that wood knowing who's in charge here. See, I'm hitting that fall away area. That's going to be your 13th to uh, 21st fret there. Just hitting it really hard. See, there's a little shiny spot there from the patina on the wood. That means I haven't hit it yet. Speaking of making the wood shiny, this is my clarification juice. Just going to let that sit for a little bit and get back to the body. I'm the type of person who always likes to do something while something else is sitting. And there's a lot of times where you gotta let stuff sit. So here we go, back to uh, filling in the dimples. Which again, showed up a lot easier once we had that primer on there. Now these, I'm gonna have to let them sit. I can't really uh, hit that with the accelerator. I can, but I have to be really careful because the accelerator will also pop that paint. So in this case, I'm just squeegeeing it really light so that it air dries quicker. And I use the uh, razor blade to squeegee that CA. And some more holes to fill here. You want to make sure before you get to the color that all your gaps are gone. And in this case, even though I'm, I'm using a polyester sealer between this layer and the color, I still want as many gaps gone here so I don't have to use as much material. It's not my intention to, you know, plastic dip this guitar. I want to use as little uh, filler material as possible. And CA is a lot less uh, tone damaging than polyester. Okay, so now we're in the spray booth. So this is the point where dust is going to matter. So we'll take our tack cloth, get things all nice and clean. There you go. And yes, I'm still using a rattle can to do this. Uh, the amount of primer I use, or should I say, it? yeah, I just don't use a lot. I don't, doesn't warrant, you know, getting a bottle going and all that stuff, except the air compressor. And you can see how just how bright that white is. My paint booth has a lot of bright lights. I want to make sure I see everything. Spot. Looks like we got that. All right. And yep, back to the neck. So while that sits, now we're fine and center. Typical dot inlays are three, five, seven, nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, and in this next case, twenty-one. Getting those uh, center found, marking the spots, the punch, and then coming in with a small drill bit. You'll find a lot of fretboard materials, you know, have a brittleness to it, and especially if your blades aren't up to snuff, you will crack them. So in this case, you see I'm using the the bit that's up to size, but I'm going backwards, and I still cracked it. Not to worry, kids, we've got CA in the house, and here we go. So we fix it, patch it, and get it all nice and cleaned up. And it wants to crack some more. So we do it again. And anything worth doing once is worth doing again, and again, and again. CA, drop these little pearly white dots in there, and just keep doing it. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm just checking one more time that those things look like they're right. Those are the ones that stand out. If they're not, in this case, you know, I could adjust the drill bit a little bit. And another crack. Fortunately, the grains in this walnut are so extreme that, you know, when you patch those things, you don't even see them. Yay. Now you see I got the accelerator there, which is great for when I was patching the crack, but when it comes to putting these um, inlays in, I don't like using an accelerator. I like just letting it air dry. I find that it comes out clearer. So, yep, set that aside. Back to the body now. Now that's the last coat of uh, primer there. It's only been on for 20, maybe 30 minutes while I took care of those inlays. So that's the, that's the good thing because uh, you see I'm taking the tape off. You want to take the tape off while that, that uh, paint or primer is still kind of soft. That way you can come smooth it. See how I'm smoothing it down with the razor blade. You don't want it to be uh, totally cured. You want it to be set enough that you can touch it with your finger and not leave a fingerprint. But you don't want it to be totally cured. This way it's a little more malleable. I think that's the right word. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. All right. And we let that set overnight. The good thing about that primer is you can get to it the next day and uh, it's ready for, for paint. You can let it cure the full 72 hours like you would enamel, but you don't need to. If that was enamel, then of course I would. So here I'm using a, a scraper tool. I think I paid, I don't know, $300 for it at Stumac, something like that. It seemed pretty pricey at the time, but I'll tell you what, I've seen guys make some funky looking tools on the interweb, and this little tool here just works. It works so well. I might have exaggerated on the price, but for a hunk of iron, it seemed like I paid a lot, but I'll tell you what, that hunk of iron is perfect. It's exactly what you need right there. If you got a hunk of iron laying around the house that you want to modify, great. But like I said, I've seen guys make so many different funky tools that, you know, all you need is a metal stick. The trick is you don't want it too sharp. I've seen guys try to use razor blades and they get in trouble. You don't want it that sharp. I've got razor blades around. I don't use them for this. That's it. Just scrape the paint off the binding and then come back and sand it a little bit. And that just gets us the edges a little smoother so you don't have little berries sticking up. And this is the process we're going to repeat several times. So we're doing this to get this thing ready for the seal coat. And then once we paint it, then we're going to scrape the binding again. And then we're going to clear coat, and then we're going to scrape the binding again. And then we're going to put the final clear coat. So yeah, so that's why I used tape at that first time because I just didn't want to beat up this binding too much because you do take off a little bit as you're taking off the whatever's on it paint or clear coat or whatever luckily for you you see all these edits and fades this is actually this is about a 40 minute job lucky for you guys I, I pulled it down to about two and a half I could edit more, but I think it's, it's important you do see the amount of labor that goes into it. Now here's just good old fashioned sanding. I'm hitting this uh, with 220 right now. I don't want to take off too much color. Some does come off, but that's okay. But I'm just hitting it with 220, getting it ready for the, the uh, poly resin that's going to go on there. And here we are, back in the booth. Blow out any extra dust that might have escaped me, and then of course use the tack cloth. It's... Now I happen to be using solar res. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, you could use regular standard cure MEK type mix, but 
Solar res doesn't, doesn't require MEK, which is one less chemical for me to have to worry about. And in this case, uh, it actually uses UV lights. So what I did there is I mixed it half and half with acetone to thin it down to make it go through the, the sprayer better. They tell you you don't have to thin it that way, but I do. So I mix it half, one part, one part uh, solar res, one part acetone, and then I put in another part of solar res. So really it's got, it's a three to one mix by the time we're all said and done. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Tack cloth on footage for you. Very important. Those things are really cool. They do a good job of getting everything ready for you. Now, first layer here, speaking of tack, I'm just going to spray lightly, get a tack layer going on. I'm not coating this thing. I'm not flooding it. I just want to get enough for that to chemically respond to the primer and kind of set in a little bit. And here's how I cure it. So these are UV lights. Real easy to get now, especially nowadays that, you know, Growers like to use these things. Um, party lights, people use them. They're not that expensive. Now, being in Southern California where I am right now, I could have taken this thing out and also uh, let the sunlight do it, the natural sunlight. But it's hard to get footage of that without you know, exposing the neighborhood. So this works. You see, it's already dried to the touch. I just moved a, a hair or something got on there. Now I'm flooding it. And I'm mostly going to flood one side or the other at a time because it's easier to cure that way. So I'm flooding the back at this point. And see how the mist clears by the time I set these up. And you just give it a rotation. Now this time I'm letting it set a little longer because the more that's on there, the more you want to hit it. If you notice that tack layer, I didn't leave them on there very long. It doesn't take very long. And it, but I still wanted the material to be a little tacky, not totally cured when I go on to the next layer. If you do that, then you got to sand it. But if you leave it a little tacky, then it's going to meld to itself, especially with the acetone mixed in there. So here again, this time I'm flooding the front, getting a little bit all around, but definitely flooding the front up. And it... Missed a little spot there, I guess. There you go. Now, it does seem like like a deal, like a, maybe an ordeal to keep pulling these up, setting them up, but it's really not no big thing. The fact of the matter is, I mean, within, if I wanted to leave these things on there, I'd come back half an hour, that, that stuff is hard as a rock, and I'm ready to paint, but my schedule doesn't allow that, so I am gonna let this sit there after we're all done here. And I think that's actually it for the day. Well, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so my bottle's empty. I'm cleaning it. If you notice the uh, black line up there on the left corner, that's because at this point, I actually took one of those lamps and it's hanging from a hook. So it's shining down while the one that's in the foreground blocking your view is shining across. Yes, please click the like and subscribe button, share and ring that bell, and come back. The next episode is really going to touch on some fretwork for you and paint. We're going to get some color. Thank you very much.